When creating or drawing backgrounds, it can be hard and confusing to know where to start. There's a lot of options, a lot of things people talk about, like, you know, perspective, understanding foreground, middle ground, background, compositional ideas, tonal layouts, arrangements, etc., etc. What I want to talk about in this video is what I consider to be like the golden rule of backgrounds and something that we can use to really help frame a lot of these other ideas. This is especially important because often the things that I'm talking about on this channel sort of are at the cross section of like comics and illustration. And what I want to talk about today is simplicity, is understanding how to sort of just think about what the background needs to do at its most primal fundamental level. And I think this is something that works both for comics and illustration. And that's why I think it's a primal rule that really is something you need to consider. This is just simply about simplicity itself. This can manifest in clarity of narrative, understanding what the story you're trying to tell in your illustration is and how the background supports that, how to make sure that you're making people understand where your action is taking place. It's really basic. The other thing is that when we're drawing comics, the thing you always have to do is create an establishing shot. It's probably the same for film and animation and all of these things. You need to establish the action. Where are these things taking place? These are all really fundamental, simple rules, but I think they are golden principles that you can apply to pretty much everything. And that's what I want to dig into deeply in this video. Now you might be saying, look, that sounds easy. It's probably a little bit too simple. Like what's actually going on there. So again, let's dig into this and I'll really outline why this is important and how you can think about it and how you can try and get these ideas into your images and how I think that if you don't do them, you're pretty much always going to be destined to fail. I think when you mess this up, everything is an uphill slog. And if you get it right, often again, it's the opposite thing. It's kind of like you're coasting downhill. Everything's a little bit easier. It's easier to draw the background. It's easier to, you know, create your comic book, to create subsequent panels. Everything just becomes a lot easier when you get this stuff right. Anyway, let's jump in, get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the art of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about illustration, how to get more polish into your work, how to think about composition, I think that relates to what I'm gonna talk about in this video. You can check out my free illustration mini workshop. This really, you know, charts my course course as an artist going from when I completely sucked to the point where I, you know, was a professional artist. I had books published, was getting lots of work, etc. And it talks about, you know, the key things that I think are really important to consider as you traverse that journey. Again, how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to think about composition, and, you know, also a little bit of how to go about getting clients and, you know, trying to think about work in the beginning. Anyway, it's free. The link will be in the description go check it out. Now, this is gonna be a lot easier if I show you examples. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll just sort of show you a couple of pages I've been working on and we'll just sort of underline this concept so you can know exactly what I mean by simplicity and more specifically with comics, the idea of an establishing shot. So here we have some pages from a comic that I was working on, Star Atlas Core. This is a science fiction comic. Now, I'll give a few different examples here uh, while we're in Photoshop and, you know, talk about illustration as well. I've got a couple of other sort of good things that will illustrate this point. Now, the goal here is not necessarily to do a demo and sort of describe exactly how you would do this. It's just to point out this is often why backgrounds are working. And these are the things that I've learned over the years that really help. Now, we can observe this idea of sort of clarity and simplicity in the need and the application of an establishing shot in film, animation, in this case, comics. So here I've got a shot and this is where we're on a space station, right? So this is a space station. It's called Mondra 7. I actually have earlier in the book, this is actually the first page of this episode, an establishing shot of them kind of going to this station, or at least that we are kind of visiting here. So it frames the action. Now, again, we can kind of see that these are visually linked and a lot of this is very much intentional. A big part of the goal is to show an establishing shot 
which is both this for the entire space station and then this one here um, that I've got now covering up where we kind of see, okay, we're closer in and then we get closer and closer. And that really is the goal. Now, a big part of the entire design here of the space, and I would say of a lot of filmic spaces is, and a lot of video game design is creating iconic elements that you can show in a background that kind of constantly aid your navigation and basically figuring out what's there. So many of these ideas are based around very, very simple, you know, iconic ways that we represent and understand the world that we, you know, move about. So it's not just that this is an issue where, oh, you kind of draw it this way, but you actually design it to, for simplicity in mind to make it very clear what the thing is. And so that if you replicate that design language um, or that sort of iconic element, you can see what's going on there. So the key thing here that I'm representing is that there are these kind of big pillars we're in this Sid Mead influence, futuristic, uh, protopian slash utopian science fiction environment. I have these kind of towers, right? So we've got these big towers and these kind of futuristic, weird structures. And we also have these kind of arches over the top. And behind that, you can kind of see asteroids. So a lot of this is clarity, but also what I'm trying to do is establish this scene. So there's a couple of things, there's, there's a number of things here that are aiding this simplicity. Once I establish that shot and I've established kind of where they are, what happens is the viewer, hopefully, again, this is just my attempt to do this. This is just what I found works. It's not necessarily going to always be perfect, but this is going to allow me to do a few things. Firstly, it allows me to draw a really cool picture of the background and focus on one thing, establishing what it is, what it should feel like, how cool and how interesting it is. And we'll talk about how that also can be related to illustration where you only have one image. But here we've got multiple. So way, a way that we kind of draw this and make this consistent is not necessarily through making sure that we are imagining some 3D environment, right? Where like, oh, I, you know, this is exactly the same place. It's not how it's done. It's done iconically. So now I understand where I am. Um, hopefully you saw the space station one. I'm like, oh, there's a space station. You can see little, if we go back there, right? I can see a little kind of version of this playing out where we've got these kind of white pillars and this stuff that again, hopefully looks like sort of foliage down there. So we've got that get out of it. And then we have this one. And so this is showing us closer. Now, once I've established that, there's a couple of other things that are established that people may or may not notice. that are all very much intentional. We can see this kind of rail system in the background. And then we zoom into this. And what I'm doing in the second shot is I'm showing a few of those iconic elements. Again, I'm showing that we have these curved um, sort of almost sort of clamshell iconic elements for these buildings that look a little bit futuristic, a um, little bit sort of retro future as well. We've got the green foliage on top. We've got the arches in the background that are kind of framing the kind of dome that, you know, is, is part of the structure. And what I'm able to do once I've established that visual shot is I can then repeat small elements of those iconic ideas in the background or I can simply use color to frame the shot. Now this is, you might want to do this depending on how much time and effort you have in for background, but the key with an establishing shot and being clear is that the clearer you are, the easier it is to draw things, right? It's physically easier to draw things when they need to be clear like this. So here I've got a nice clear shot. It allows me to draw this and really focus on just this kind of monorail style um, train that they've got and then here we can see oh these are the two characters they are you know hopefully it's clear they're sort of sitting there and once we're doing that um, I don't need to draw any backgrounds for those characters faces and here we've just got again an iconic element where we can see that yes it is him he's inside and on the outside we can see those same iconic elements zooming past so the goal is to put the effort for drawing the background in a place where we can make it sing, where we can make it clear, where we, make, we can make it good and where I don't have to worry about, you know, drawing weird little bits of background, you know, in these kind of other weird little panels.
So this is the idea. We establish the overall place they're in, which is kind of important because it could be anywhere, right? This is a science fiction environment. We have no context here. Once I've kind of established the general visual iconography for where they are, then it gives me freedom in later shots to still establish the action while, you know, not necessarily having to draw quite as much. So here I have a shot which is kind of two characters sitting in a restaurant or a bar or something like that. And we can see out the, in the background, in the window behind them, we got that same iconic environment. Now this is not drawn particularly well, it's fairly simple, but it's iconically obviously exactly the same environment. And that positions us hopefully within that environment. Once I've done that, then I can basically focus on the story action I'm going to reframe here for the character again to just kind of zoom out, breathe a little bit, makes it clear. Yes, this is where they are. We can show a few other little story action elements. And then again, I'm just going to go back to very simple sort of dialogue panels. Now, there's many different stylistic ways that you would organize the action here. A big impetus behind the visual and storytelling style of Star Atlas Core is to make it very simple to read because this is not necessarily something that's going to always be read by people who are comfortable reading comics. So I really wanted to make it as, as basic as possible, right? When someone's talking, you know, it's very clear who they are. Um, you know, just trying to make stuff as approachable as possible. It's not necessarily meant to be as dynamic or um, as crazy compositionally as some other styles of comics. So again, you know, that all of this plays into the clarity that we're needing. Simple establishing shots, people are talking. Again, the goal is just to tell the story. So here's another example, and this is actually the, the first few pages of this episode. So we follow on from this establishing shot of the Mondra 7 space station. And once I've sort of done that, I actually did another establishing shot, re-establishing. So this is, um, you know, very sort of bird's eye view, like this is kind of where they are. And this is the second establishing shot where we kind of zoom in a little bit more and we understand that, yeah, these people are talking and this is where they're situationally placed. So it aids clarity a lot to establish and re-establish and give yourself a really clear place to frame the action in the beginning. Okay, so let's just look at a few other examples just so we can sort of hammer the point home and so you can see it used in a few different scenarios. And I'm actually re-establishing the same ship in a different environment. And this is important because again, you know, it's part of the story that it's in a different spot. Here you can see again, just how I'm sort of trying to keep the background consistent and pay attention to what I am drawing and what I'm not drawing. So we can see the same sort of ship, the same environment viewed from a different perspective. But once I've kind of got that establishing shot there, then I can be a lot freer with many of the other follow up scenarios. But again, you don't always have to, um, you know, establish the action right at the beginning. You can have a little bit that is ambiguous where you're not quite sure where people are. As long as very quickly, you know, as soon as that question is in people's minds that you kind of establish the scene. I've got these cloth elements that are near the ship, right? And so I'm using these and the idea of iconic boxes. The key is that this kind of area here and this area look similar and I can kind of tell what's going on. Now there were other panels as well where the character was kind of walking up this. So it's easy. I'm making this as clear as possible so that the action work. Now here again, we're following on with the same idea, random boxes behind. And here we've got the action, which is kind of meant to be a little bit more exciting and abstract. But because I've kind of designed it to make it clear that yes, these two characters are going down this ramp, when we hit this, I can kind of be a little bit more free with how I blur the scene. I make it more dynamic, a little bit more like, whoa, what's going on? Because it's very clear based on the previous establishing shot where they are. And again, I feel like that's the point I wanna keep ramming home is that the more we use simple storytelling, we put the background where it needs to be, we establish at the right point, we zoom out when we need. It means when you're zoomed in, I don't need to draw silly boxes where I don't need to. I can let some of these panels breathe a little bit more um, and, and you know people are gonna understand, hopefully, the general sort of situational environment. And when I need to be more dynamic, because I've established earlier on, um, I can be more dynamic, more abstract, more exciting, 
and the clarity is still going to be there. Okay, same basic idea with this page again. Again, just repeating this um, concept so that it's super clear. Here we've got a basic establishing shot. Now this scene really is just two characters talking. That's it. There's nothing else in the script. Everything else is made up. But we have a good establishing shot to be like, oh, that's, this is where they are. And then we have more shots showing characters sort of floating around. And again, we get a general feeling like this is where they are. I have a few of these iconic elements again, like these big sort of glass display panels and uh, foliage. And I'm just repeating that where I need and I'm using color where I don't have anything. And here you can see with this background, I've actually just sort of made this up with flat color, but it follows the same iconic um, design language that is in the other background. So once they do that, my goal is to merely replicate that where I need to. You can see here as well, we have a lot of this visual design language is these kind of long, right, sort of vertical curving lines as these kind of giant towers kind of grip the ground almost. And, um, and we've also got these big arcing kind of egg shaped, uh, clam shaped things with foliage on top. And so I'm, I'm actually here with this background again, just flat color iconically representing that. So we get some vague feeling that like, oh, there is something there. Here we have this background, which kind of just had a little bit of extra space. I was like, Oop, we need something there. Can't just be flat color. So let's put in again, very simple representation. And what I'm doing is just using that abstractly to help lead the eye through that panel. But I can do that because it's pretty clear where they are in the first place. All right, so lastly, I just have two points here that I think is, is worth kind of adding to this. And this is where we fold in the idea of illustration or how does this idea of simplicity, establishing the shot, figuring out what's going on, how does, it, how does this apply to illustrations that either don't really have a good sense of place or again, illustrations which do, which are meant to kind of place someone in a fantasy world. Now, all these examples are my kind of examples, right? So it's gonna be art that I kind of understand. Again, I've got some good Frazetta reference here that will kind of key us into this. But um, yeah, the first thing is just like, let's look at this cover, which is again, a Star Atlas core cover. And this one doesn't really have any sense of place. It's abstract. So it's this kind of weird overlaying of these different concepts. We have this kind of broken robot guy who's a major character in the book. And we've got this writhing mass of sort of pipes and electronic tubes and stuff. And they're kind of coming to life or something. He's got this weird representation, which is an abstract representation of this device he builds. And behind that, we have a planet. Now, none of this stuff is actually in the same space. It's, it's, it's an iconic representation and it's purely designed to kind of look cool. It's designed from a graphic perspective first. And again, this is a particular type of illustration. And the key here, I think, again, is to be clear that nothing is too situational. So, where you're trying to establish something, the goal is to be really clear and say like, hey, this is where we are and now we're here and now we're here. The more abstract we are, I think you have to repeat the same idea that this is not really a physical space. This is an arrangement of abstract elements. And the more that we play up the design aspect of this and you do place things that don't necessarily belong near each other, the clearer that becomes and the more people can suspend their sense of disbelief, let's say, and start to appreciate the art, you know, kind of for what it is, which is just kind of like a cool collection of colors and shapes. All right, next let's look at some Frazetta art. A, because I always like looking at Frazetta art, and B, because I think he has, a, a, again, an interesting mix of these two things. Obviously, if you're trying to create an illustration that is sort of centered around an environment, I think we think very much about establishing the shot, but you also need to include some main action in there. And this is where composition often becomes important. Now, we could look at some stuff that, you know, does a really good mix of that. But um, let's look first at Frazetta because Frazetta often does some interesting things, which is where we do a bit of a combination of like, hey, here's an actual scene happening and the background is either abstract or kind of in this weird ether, right, where it's sort of iconic in its representation of where they are. So here we've got, again, just an abstract sky, but it is very much connected emotionally to what is going on in the situation. 
here we have this, which is, again, uh, a little bit of a sort of um, vignette style diorama of a character plus some sort of leopards. And the background there, again, is a fairly sort of simple representation of what's going on, which is so important. Now, I think the trick is, and the reason I kind of talk about this is when it was early on in my sort of developments and development as an artist, I found it very hard to do this. I found it like it kind of didn't make sense to me because I was like, but, but like, you know, how, how did, how do they make those choices? And I, I think, again, I, a lot of it is just made based on very kind of intuitive, abstract imagery, right? It, it's just trying to give a sense of place. And I think that's where a lot of these um, illustrations succeed, right? Where it's like, oh, they're on a boat. And, uh, you know, what do we need to tell about that? Nothing. We need a sail. We need, um, you know, the front of the boat. I forget what that's, what's that, what that is called. But again, you know, this is really just a matter of, uh, you know, like being very clear with where people are. And I think what I would often try and do is like draw more of the boat. I try and do more stuff because I felt like more background is better. So much of this type of illustration is about being selective and clear and again, just establishing the basic concepts that you're trying to get in um, the, the image. I think this Tarzan image is a great example of this. And it just highlights again how important I think simplicity is. We've got Tarzan hanging off some random mountain. Doesn't make any sense why he would be there. And here we have this kind of perfectly framed little city in the background. And here we have this um, river coming off here, coming off to a very um, convenient little waterfall-y thing. Now, the point is that none of this makes sense, right? This is not a logical environment. This is designed purely to represent iconically what we're trying to feel, which is that like the character is hanging up high. Um, they are looking somewhere. They're going to journey there. We can see the river is like a pathway, which is a classic compositional idea, right? We, you know, we sort of weave towards the entrance of where we're going. And then we see this, uh, you know, sort of city in the background that doesn't have anything around it. Um, again, why? Clarity, simplicity. It's often about what you don't do as much as what you do. All right, lastly, let's just look at, again, someone who's able to combine a lot of these concepts quite well, which is Jean Giraud, Mobius. Now here, again, these are not necessarily the best examples of this, but just quickly, you can see that when you're sort of trying to do multiple things at once, this is often when we need to plan the most. And this is also why if you can, if you're doing things separately, if you can keep them separate, it's a little bit easier to plan. If things are iconic, it's a little bit simpler to plan, especially as a comic book. You kind of have to really play with both of these ideas and make sure that you separate within the frame. Okay, here's the story of the background. Here's the story of the characters. And I think what you'll find is if you actually look closely at a lot of these things, that's frequently what is happening. We have a story being told in one part of the image and a story being told in another part of the image. And it's the clarity of how these things combine that will kind of make them make sense. And I think if you understand those initial ideas well, it makes this type of composition, which is often what most people are doing with illustration, makes it a lot easier to comprehend because again, what you're often trying to do is separate those ideas that I had in the beginning where you have background and characters and they're kind of interacting. We're actually trying to put them on the same page, but you need to keep them separate. So again, just keep that in mind. It's always a matter of trying to tell the story and be as simple as possible. Give yourself a place to, you know, again, draw the character, a place to draw the background and, you know, try not to get them all sort of mushed up together. All right. So hopefully those examples help to frame what I mean here about simplicity and how so important it is to establish your sort of action. Now, Obviously, that's kind of what maybe you should do or, you know, some rules and principles that will really help. What we're really trying to avoid doing here that I think, uh, again, you should try and move away from is kind of either not establishing the shot in the beginning. And I found this to be a real trap that's easy to fall into when I was drawing comics or illustrations is kind of if you don't give your composition or your page a really easy way for you to frame that action. If you're not really designing the angle of the shot and kind of being like, okay, yeah, this is where I need to look at. If you don't kind of get it right, 
or if you don't separate it out, it becomes very challenging later on. If you don't have the establishing shot, you're always sort of fighting with this idea of like, oh, I need to show where they are. I need to figure this out. And what you find, again, is that often with uh, graphic storytelling, what's happening is people are kind of connecting these things up a little bit. So when you're doing comics, have establishing shots in there. I think it's very, very important. Don't just try and draw mushy backgrounds behind something. It, you know, if a shot doesn't need a background, don't put it in. It should be clear from the scene what's happening anyway. You do need to reestablish. You do need to breathe. But again, what you want to do when you're breathing is to breathe, right? Take another sort of establishing shot. Set the scene. Um, set the mood. And you want to focus on that. You want to be clear on, hey, this is a background shot. This is where they are. This is cool. Look at this. Feel the vibe, right? You don't want to be combining that with, oh, and then there's people talking and doing all this stuff at the same time. The more you separate ideas out, the more clear you can be, the more you can sing a simple visual note. Now, I would say the more that you can hang to that simple idea, the better. Because as we add complexity to our scenes, as you kind of have the requirement from a brief to kind of say, oh no, no, I want you to draw a single illustration. And it kind of can't be too abstract, right? I need a scene where it's like I need five warriors and they're like in a fantasy city and they're fighting a dragon, right? You kind of need to be like, okay, well, they're here and the dragon's here. Like, where do I frame this? A big part of the goal there with drawing backgrounds and scenes is to be very clear and say, like, how can I frame the action so that I make it really clear? Like, here's the character, here's the dragon. Here's the background and give yourself space to have fun and draw those things well so that people can enjoy looking at them. And again, that can be really simple, like those Frazetta images where it's like, here's the character, here's the background. And, you know, the background is specifically designed because this is one image. Remember, we don't need to do more of these. It's just one. You can kind of have whatever you want. And maybe that scene wouldn't work from any other angle. Maybe it wouldn't work if you, you know, did anything else with it. It's kind of this abstract idea space thing. But... Nevertheless, it works quite powerfully because that's often how our brain, in my opinion, understands images. It's very clear. It's, oh, this thing and this thing. All right. Anyway, I think that's all we got time for on this one. Just a quick video. Hopefully, again, not too quick, but not too long. If you know my normal sort of videos get pretty epic. Hopefully this one was interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I really think that these ideas are more important than the questions of like, hey, you know, how do I do perspective? How do I do this? It's foreground, middle ground, background. It doesn't matter how much perspective you use. All those things are hard, right? It's hard to draw that stuff. If you get it right and you think iconically, it's almost you can warp the rules of perspective a little bit. They become less important. You've got more ability to lean on kind of, you know, strong image making and ideas versus kind of, you know, again, struggling just to kind of make it all work. I know that sounds a little bit mystical, but that has nevertheless been my experience. If you get these things right, everything else is a little bit easier. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.